Yeah, uh, thank you very much. And um, hello to everyone. Uh, namaste, konnichiwa, konbanwa. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I'm not, um, anyway, thank you for the opportunity. Um, and uh, I'm not all that familiar with the, uh, with Zoom or uh, the share screen. So I probably won't try tonight. <laughs> Maybe if I can get something organized quickly, but um, um, perhaps in future I can prepare something and uh, uh, present it. Uh, so um, anyway, um, as an introduction, yeah, uh, I'm from the US. I've been living in Japan for uh, about 38 years. Unfortunately, my Japanese is not that good, but uh, uh, I can get by. And about 10 years ago, I was um, thinking about what to do when I retire. And uh, I like traveling. And I also was interested in trying to do something positive after I retire, something useful, continue teaching, perhaps, is my skill. So I decided to. Uh, volunteer in Nepal. I got an opportunity to volunteer in Nepal, and uh, which was a country I wanted to go to for a long time. And so I went and I did some volunteer teaching for uh, one month in a monastery in uh, Beshi Shahar, and, uh, which is uh, near uh, uh, I guess you could say near Pokhara, if you're familiar with Nepal. Um, anyway, it was a, a, a wonderful experience. I was uh, teaching in the monastery there, and I had a chance to see, uh, visit some schools and some children's homes. And uh, I was naturally impressed with the, the beautiful scenery of Nepal. But what was uh, most interesting to me was uh, how friendly everyone was and what a, a pleasant uh, uh, country it was to visit now every, as I say, how friendly everyone was. Um, but at the same time, I was surprised, a little bit surprised uh, uh, at some of the poverty and the fact that many children were not able to go to school or it was extremely difficult for parents to uh, send their children to school because of lack of funds and so forth. Um, so I wanted to help somehow. And um, uh, I just uh, was in a situation where I could sponsor several people, but uh, I realized I needed some help. And so I decided to start uh, to ask my family and my friends. And therefore I got the name of Family and Friends Project and uh, in 2011, we started um, sponsoring 11 children. And now uh, this last year, 2021, uh, we are sponsoring uh, 162 children uh, in different schools and through organizations. Um, but I also realized that um, it's important to get give children an opportunity to go to school, but it's also important for um, to provide a, a good education for the children. And the thing that impressed me with many of the teachers I met was their enthusiasm, uh, their commitment to teaching, but many of them were, were untrained and they wanted to learn more, they wanted to learn new ideas. Uh, so we decided to start a uh, teacher development program. And um, uh, we work with organizations in Nepal to provide uh, uh, teacher training. We also bring some teachers, uh, some colleagues of mine and teach other teachers in Japan uh, to come to Nepal to do some workshops and teaching. So. And that was uh, kind of a step two for Family and Friends Project is, is starting uh, teacher development. So we get children into school and uh, at a lot of the schools we work with, we are able to uh, get interested teachers who want to uh, do some more training and improve their knowledge and skills. Um, and the next thing we found was that the teachers 
were trained, but often they didn't have equipment, uh, books and educational materials. So that became our third uh, uh, focus. And so now we are uh, not only providing sponsorships and teacher training, but we try to support as well by making sure we, uh, we can provide the teachers with the uh, uh, textbooks with well, not the textbooks, but with the teaching materials, the games, the puzzles, and so forth. Um, and naturally, it's kind of developed too. We work with uh, several organizations in Nepal sponsoring children and teacher development, but they their main focus is on uh, working with uh, migrant. Uh, families or uh, people who have uh, suffered from human trafficking. So we worked with uh, Mighty Nepal, with Shakti Samaha, Shanti Foundation, uh, some of the organizations we work with, and um, we support children that are connected to those groups. And um, one of those groups in particular works with uh, early childhood education uh, literacy and life skills uh, for small children, preschool children. So um, our basic, uh, what we're doing now essentially is number one, getting children into school. Number two, helping the teachers uh, get some of the training that they like and so that the, the quality of education is good. Make sure they had good material. And we're also focusing uh, a lot on life skills, uh, such as literacy, uh, learning how to read, and uh, learning how to do basic uh, uh, hygiene activities, uh, especially for preschool children, uh, uh, basic reading, writing, uh, mathematics, uh, very simple mathematics, but life skills. We also, um, do uh, have supported uh, adult literacy programs um, for adults wanting to learn uh, how to read and write and do basic business skills. And all of this is through partner organizations in Nepal. And uh, we are very lucky, I think, to have some very, uh, some very good qualified uh, organizations uh, doing some very good work. Uh, um, as far as life skills for preschool children or uh, adults learning literacy um, and teacher training and so forth. So um, as I say, we have 162 children in school now. Uh, we've, been, we've worked with uh, uh, close to 50 teachers uh, and we have uh, three or four life skills programs that we're uh, supporting at this stage. Uh, so one, anyone who donates, 100% of the donation goes to uh, the projects themselves in order to make money for uh, administration costs. Uh, we, have, we also have a handicraft program and we buy handicrafts from uh, different organizations in Nepal, um, all of them fair trade programs and uh, usually with women who have been rescued from trafficking or um, uh, who have been abused, come from uh, very difficult situations and they're learning a trade themselves. They're learning how to do handicrafts. So we buy handicrafts from them, bring it back and sell it. The money we make from those handicrafts we use to uh, cover our administrative costs and uh, so, as I say, 100% of the donations go directly to uh, our projects to help support the children or the teachers or the, the, the projects. Um, it's been a very interesting, I've, I've learned so much. Um, this last year was kind of a good, bad situation because uh, I was in Nepal when the pandemic hit to the hardest and uh, I was to be there for uh, one month, about uh, actually about six weeks, five or six weeks. But uh, I got stuck in the lockdown and I was in Nepal for eight months. 
uh, I couldn't fly out. So, um, and it was a very, I could see it was a very difficult situation for so many people in Nepal, but it gave me a very good opportunity to get to work with some of our organizations a little bit more closely uh, to see many of the difficulties facing people in a uh, developing country. Um, and um, anyway, it was a very good learning experience. Every year is there's something new, something different. There's high points, there's low points. Um, and this last year was uh, one of the most uh, rewarding but difficult times as well. So it was very uh, difficult, but uh, I learned many things and have a deeper appreciation for uh, the people of Nepal for uh, doing work in Nepal and uh, so, so I hope that wasn't too fast or <laughs> uh, too too much. <laughs> no, Randy, thank you so much uh, for your short presentation and introduction uh, about friends and family. I see that uh, you started uh, this NGO uh, by yourself on your own and through the support of your family and friends. And I think um, that is wonderful because uh, as one person, I think uh, there is a, uh, there's a lot uh, for you to do other than your uh, job. And I think that's, I, I mean, as a representative from uh, Nepal, I, I really want to thank you uh, for going through so much uh, trouble and also feeling for the difficulty situation in Nepal. Actually, Randy, now I would like to open the floor and I would like, uh, I have three can people I, today. Uh -huh. Can I say one quick thing? Uh, yes, yeah, please. thank you for your um, uh, for your comments. I did start it on my own, but when I got back to the Japan, and I talked to family and friends, so now we have an organization that has uh, more than fifty supporters, um, and uh, we have a committee, uh, family and friends project committee of about fifteen members. So. Um, they are the ones we have uh, deputy chair and we have all of the, the uh, officers and so forth. So um, now I'm not doing it on my own. So I do have a lot of help from uh, many people that I'm uh, uh, very thankful for. So not just me. Thank you. Thank you, um, Randy. I, I'm, I'm sure uh, all the people, the supporters, and without their help, it's not possible. I hope uh, someday we get to uh, meet uh, other supporters. And also, uh, let me tell uh, Masa Aki and Kishor San, uh, Kishorzi and Yui San today, she, they are all here, that uh -huh. it was a great surprise for me because I was in Kobe um, in this uh, April 2nd <laughs> to 6th. And I was in Kobe at gallery called Gallery Saga. Okay, here I have new people coming in. Uh -huh. I was in um, Gallery Saga where I was uh, having art exhibition uh, of 48 artists and uh, Kobe newspaper came to make a short article, a newspaper article, and uh, they wrote a short paper article and uh, Randy, Randy read the article and came to the gallery and that's where we met. So I told him about this Zoom program and he accepted it and that's how everybody is meeting Randy today. All right, so I think that's uh, many coincidences uh, in this world make things run and uh, I'm very happy to introduce Randy in our weekly Zoom today. Okay, so one by one, uh, I would like, uh, okay, Pashupati ji is here, he, he missed, uh, yeah, you missed the little presentation, but would you like to introduce yourself, say something about yourself, Pashupati ji, and then Kishore ji, Masaaki san, and Yui, please, if you can, turn on your camera when you speak. Uh, let's go, Pashupati ji. Okay, hello everyone, uh, this is Pashupati Naupane. Uh, I'm from Kathmandu and we are working uh, in a software company and we are promoting some educational ERP. 
for netflix education and also uh, we are planning to initiate a few agro based entrepreneurship initiatives here in nepal it's okay thank you okay that's great uh, you mean agro entrepreneurial uh, efforts that's great yes. so that can be useful for friends and family uh, as well uh, next i would like to request uh, masaaki ito san he is the first timer in this zoom and i wish uh, uh, welcome to you masaaki ito san uh, would you please like to introduce yourself if you have any question for Randy, any comments, please? Okay. Hi. My name is Masakito. I'm uh, 30 years old from um, Japan, Aichi. And I, I, mm. Mm, I work at logistic company to responsible uh, inventory uh, inventory management and dispatch management. I see. Yeah. Mm, yes. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank <laughs> you. Um, Masaki here mm. is. Um, uh, introduced to me by my friend Chie Sato and mm. uh, she told me that Masaki is very interested to learn English, isn't mm. it? So yes, I think you. um, your your English is very good. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, Masaki, thank you. Thank um, you. Next is, um, may I ask Yui, Yui-san, Dr. Yui Oyaki uh, to introduce herself? Okay, uh, hello from Japan. Uh, I'm Yui Oyake. I'm a researcher about um, forest ecology and revegetation area. Uh, actually, now, now I'm cooking. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> uh, Thank you for uh, joining. <laughs> and uh, well, I'm planning to um, Constructing a rain garden in Kagawa University. Uh, if my plan be well, when when my plan will be good, uh, I, I'd like to introduce him pre uh, do, do a presentation about it. That's very good. Finally. Uh, Dr. Yui Oyaki is assistant professor at Kagawa University, and she is working to build rain garden. Hey, pani pani ko pila ko bogaiza. Hey, you bogaiza chay wa kina important. Why is it important? Because the rain that's falling is on concrete, isn't it? It's on concrete, so we need to get the rain underground. Okay, underground, because underground water is decreasing. And this is what her last presentation was about. So I'm very happy for you. Uh, Yui, thank you. Uh, next is we have first time uh, participant, uh, Kishore Pradhan, sir. Sir, welcome and namaste. If you have a chance, please turn on your camera. Namaste, Hello. Hi, Namaste. Hi, I'm, I'm, I'm Kishore Pradhan. I live in Nepal, Kathmandu. So I'm in this through Asta's friend and uh, my wife, in fact, <laughs> who happens to be Asta's friend. And it's very interesting what you are doing. You're trying to learn about SDGs. So as for myself, what I do, so after working for so many development organizations, it's been, I think, slightly more than a decade. So I do freelancing. I'm a development consultant, independent development cons consultant. And I basically focus my work on knowledge management and communication. So it's basically development, knowledge management, and uh, communication. So it's very interesting what uh, my uh, uh, Yuki, Dr. Yuki, right? So she wants to develop a rain garden. So uh, uh, we, we used to have a lot of wetlands in Kathmandu, 
which used to give us uh, maintain our water level in the valley. So most of these wetlands have been disappearing right now in Kathmandu. And the recent case has been of Kamal Pokhri, which the government wants to uh, uh, renovate, in fact, renovate in the sense, put all the concrete, which is in fact is going to disturb the ecological system, right? The natural system, how the water was being managed in Kathmandu Valley. So what I'm trying to get at is, uh, we have problems like that and what, like what you are doing. We have been doing a lot of uh, rainwater harvesting in Nepal, but not in that big scale so that we can preserve our water. So all these things are very important for me and very interesting because I'm a development anthropologist also because I have been looking at development. Uh, frankly speaking, I look at development very critically. So... <laughs> I mean, to tell you the fact, before SDGs, there were MDGs, Millennium Development Goals, and before that, there was PRSP. So these things keep on changing, right? So, I mean, the development is in the development target keep on changing, but what is important is like, I think uh, we should be very clear about what we really want to develop, how we really want to develop. That's more important. And that kind of voice, I think, has to find space in the international development decision making also. Yes. So, that, um, that's so me. yeah. Yes, thank you, Kishorsi. Um, Kishor sir, thank you so much. Uh, next, I would like to request uh, Daiki Ueda to give a short introduction about yourself okay. and your interests, Daiki. Okay, um, I'm Daiki Ueda, and I'm from Hiroshima. And uh, now I'm living in me, me, me prefecture. And I, I graduated from Kitasato University uh, as my bachelor. And I'm graduated from me university as my master. Um, and I, and my, ho my hobby is um, building something with Lego. <laughs> Lego, okay. Thank Lego. you, Daiki. But you're doing research about uh, about what? What's your about, research oh, about? Um, microbarrier oceanography. Yeah, oceanography inside the ocean. He's studying uh, bacteria in the ocean. Right? Yes. Uh, so that's great. So I uh, once again, everybody welcome. And I think some people came late and missed Randy's uh, presentation. But I want to. Uh, introduce to you what Randy um, uh, tried to, uh, Randy had um, talked about his, uh, let me see, this is his Facebook page. Um, this is called yeah. facebook.com friends, family, uh, family friends project. And um, Randy, please correct me if I'm wrong. I'm going to say it one more time. And this is Family and Friends Project. This is right. an NGO that Randy initially founded. Uh, this NGO is helping students, educationists, people who are uh, teachers. So uh, what Randy said was giving scholarship was his first target. Then secondly, he give teacher training was his second target. Then they started supporting with education materials, kyoiku mm -hmm. yes, like textbooks. Uh, not so much textbooks, but other material games, puzzles, um, uh, other education materials. Yes. Um, so this is his Facebook page, and uh, he is now supporting 162 students in Nepal. This is mainly in Pokhara, Randy? Uh, no, this is around Kathmandu, actually. We are supporting a, a few places in Pokhara, a few children's homes. Um, but uh, mostly it's in um, uh, around the Kathmandu Valley area. <laughs> Uh, south of uh, Kathmandu, Farping, uh, Niraj, do you know Niraj Shresa? 
Uh, he what sent me a request. Your... Yes, he sent me uh, some uh, message. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we work with him. I noticed he's one of your friends uh, on Facebook. Um, <clears throat> oh, in Farping. In Farping, yeah. Yes, yes, he is my friend. Yes, he, mm, he, yeah. he is running the uh, community learning center. That's right, yeah. And we worked with some teacher training with him. Uh, and uh, we had Mahat, uh, the uh, principal of the school. And this, uh, the woman you see now is Shanti Tamang Lama. She's working on uh, health issues with women, uh, but we're supporting some of the children uh, whose family or the children themselves are affected by uh, HIV and AIDS. Um, but uh, she's, uh, she's been, uh, she's a member of uh, Shakti Samaha. The next picture actually is an adult literacy program we're working with. Mm -hmm. And I think this is in Dong district. I haven't actually been there myself. But, okay, Dong, yes. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but this is adult literacy program that we're supporting. Yeah, if you uh, want, Randy, I know a professor in uh, Ehime University. Uh, mm -hmm. He is from Dang. Oh, uh -huh. yes. So the conditions you can see here, you know, SDG is talking about equality and quality education and all this, uh, you know, ideal world, right? And it's good we have a goal, Kishore sir, but the conditions um, in Nepal, you know, and um, what's important is uh, everybody tries uh, because the goals are uh, on every individual leaving no one behind is the goal. So I think every individual, if they feel conscious about the 17 goals, I think we, even though we don't achieve the goals, we get somewhere near the goals. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm going to stop talking about friends and family here. So I want to send this link to you. Okay, everybody, I want to send this link to you so that you, through your Facebook, you can like this page. And also, Randy, do you mind if I send them your Facebook page? No, that would that's fine. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Because, you know, some people, they want to actually be your friend and communicate with you after this Zoom. Uh huh. Okay. Um, as I was listening um, to you, are you familiar with uh, Peace and Nature? Uh, it's an uh, it's an NPO here in Kobe that works with uh, organic farming. Yes. And educating uh, uh, young students, junior high school, high school students. Mm -hmm. Uh, about the value of ag agriculture and farming and organic farming in particular, uh, very active. Um, unfortunately, I'm not sure how to um, <laughs> share. Uh, uh, don't worry, Randy, I already have it here. So I'm going to send this link uh, oh. to everybody, Peace and Nature, and then I'm going okay. to share it very quickly. Uh, this is their website. Oh, you can you can see the piece of nature. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'll learn how to do this one day. <laughs> and they have a SDGs online roundtable discussion. Uh, they had one, so yeah. I think this is great, Randy. Thank you for introducing peace and nature to us. That would be very interesting for Daiki, for Masa Masa Aki, and for Pashupatiji, for Kishorsa, everybody here. So. Um, let me put a short uh, breakout room here, like two minutes, so you can talk to each other. Mm. Is that okay? Okay. Yep. okay. Um, I'm going to put just, I'm going to divide us into two groups so you can chat with each other for just some time. Okay. If you see the arrow, please click on the arrow. I see join. <laughs> yes. Paspati ji, dekhnu bhaiyo? 
पशुपति जी ゆいさん、グループに行くお願いします。ごめんなさい。クラッシュしちゃった。いえいえ、大丈夫。You know, グループ2に送るね。はい、ありがとうございます。大輝さん、学生です。<laughs> okay, welcome back, everybody. So now we are ready to.、Uh, did you have a short, nice chat? Yep.、Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> did you enjoy? It was very short. I'm sorry.、Uh, but we will have second group chat after this presentation. So please get ready to look at very, very strange creatures. Are you ready? <laughs> okay.、Um, So, you know, I created this、um, video for students、um, in, in English class. Their, their English is not very advanced, so I made it very simple. So, there is a number, okay? Here you are going to see 50 animals. How many? 50, okay? And you will see that each slide has a number, okay? There's a number. Masaki? There's a number. What is the number do you see here? 253. Yes. So that number is going to change. And what everybody needs to do, okay? The number, you have to remember two numbers of animals 
you like or you are curious about to know more. Okay, if you think, oh, this butterfly, I want to know more, then you have to remember 253. Okay, you have to remember 253. If you can't remember 253, you have to remember the name. <laughs> so maybe the name is a little bit difficult. So if you, if you can, you can remember the name. Okay, so here we start. Himalayan red lacewing. Krishna peacock butterfly. <coughs> wolf spider okay wolf spider has babies on its back the male one carries its babies makes a hole okay flying fish okay this is a fish that can actually fly short period It is actually in Japan. They're doing a research. Iberian pig. Okay. In Iberian Peninsula. Tiger snake. Tiger snake because it's yellow yeah, and it's black good. and has stripes. Bearded Emperor Tamarin. Nice beard. It lives in big banana leaves in the tropics. Bald uwakari. A monkey. Uwakari. It's bald, no hair on the head. Resplendent quetzal. Wow, what it's beautiful. It's a quetzal. Quetzal, you know, these, these um, uh, the one that's former, sorry. The quetzal is uh, very famous for its uh, feather. Um, just a minute, let me go back. Okay, the feather uh, used by the Mayans, I think some, um, some kings, um, it looks like a crown here. I'm gonna show you once again, the feather of the, the Quetzal bird. Okay, this is the Quetzal bird crown. This crown is worn by the king of the Aztec, sorry, it's the Aztec leader's headdress made of quetzal thick feathers. So you can see that each bird has two. So how many birds? <laughs> Lots of birds were used. Yes, so let me continue the slideshow. Look at the shell. Oh. Mountain bluebird. Coconut octopus. Vakita is not a dolphin. It's a type of uh, same family. Hawksbill turtle. 
Okay, those who are studying marine biology may know that these turtles are now at risk. Um, Scalloped hammerhead shark. Hammerhead shark. They look like sea cows that are already extinct. It's a kind of starfish found on the ocean bed. Samudra ko sota hama pain sa is to jib. Predatory tunicate. We are in uh, Nepal. We don't have the ocean. So first time I came to Japan, I am Ghost looking at lobster. strange creatures from the ocean. Ghost lobster. Giant lobster. Uh, gigantic. Yes. Rainbow squirrel. Wow. Magnificent. Yes, <laughs> it is. Elegant. And we're making free hopper. Excellent. Yes, it's a kind of a semi in Japanese. It's semi like a cicada thing, but actually it's a tree hopper. Amazonian royal fly catcher. Wow. It's beyond my description. <laughs> It's got hooks on its back. Goliath, bird eater, spider. <laughs> you know, I never knew that there were there's so much variety in spider world. Long legged wolf. Jabiru stork. Pink hairy armadillo. We've heard of the Yeti of the Himalayas, but not a crab. Finnick fox. Cute. Desert rain frog. Boxer crab. 
and this is very interesting because like wearing boxing gloves. All right. So here, this slideshow ends. Uh, and <laughs> so if you want to watch this one more time, you know, I put a lot of time making these videos and I like to make my students surprised, you know, to see uh, so many biodiverse, I mean, the biodiversity in nature. Right? Just that one spider, there's so many. Just that one snake, there's so many. Just that one bird, but there's so many kinds, right? And more and more, when our jungles, like the place their habitat gets destroyed, they have no place to live. And we and our children and their children don't even know they are existing. Right? Today, the children, they like to play the video game and they are in the digital world. They are not in the natural world, right? So looking at nature, being able to see the real thing, the real animal is become rare chance for us. We can sometimes see it in a zoo, in a botanical garden. Maybe if you come to Nepal, maybe Randy, have you been to Chitwan National Safari Park? Oh, uh, yes, I have. I've been there. Yeah, very interesting. <laughs> yeah, so if you go there, maybe you can see if you are lucky. Otherwise, we don't even know they actually exist. Mm -hmm. So I've had lots of fun making this video. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you choose one animal, one or two animal that's very curious for you? Did you choose? Yes, yes. So I'm giving second uh, breakout room where you can share this animal. You can ask your friend uh, which animal was most interesting for you. Okay, so let's go back. In childhood, I, yes, I feed, feed, no, I, it, my family has two, two dogs. Yes. Two dogs, uh-huh. Yes. Uh, Belgian tab, Tabiran and Retriever, Black Retriever. Yeah. No, what do you mean? Well, mm, mm, so, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think it is not strange. So you mean uh, typical? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But uh, then, uh, then I have a question: Why, why is it coconut? Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure about it. Um, they usually. Uh,
Welcome back. Uh, I, 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 I'm mistake. <laughs> <laughs> this new, new group. <laughs> I I miss my I what did you choice. Mean? Okay, so now I, what I want to request you um, is in the chat box. I put the slideshow link. Okay, if you I want to watch it one more time. Okay, if you think I want to watch, uh, welcome back everybody. If you think I want to watch this slideshow one more time at home with my friends, with my family, then you can click on this link. Okay, in the chat box, you, if you click there, the slideshow will begin again. So which animal was most interesting for you? Uh, Randy, let's start with Randy. Uh, well, first, I'd like to say uh, I was amazed that uh, uh, there's so many animals that I had never seen or known of before. <laughs> so uh, that was quite amazing. And I've been to a lot of countries and I've been to zoos and aquariums. Uh, and uh, but there's some very amazing, um, amazing animals that uh, I just didn't realize existed. Uh, I knew there were, um, mostly towards the end. And like you say, there's so many varieties, uh, spiders and snakes. And I um, was starting to talk with uh, Masaki Ito about the, um, son, about the, uh, even the dogs, Labrador retriever, how many different types of retrievers there are than that. But um, I, one question was, I think, 254. Yes. Uh, it was the butterfly. Mm -hmm. um, and it says it's the pr proposed national butterfly, but it hasn't been decided yet. Uh, that's a very good it. question. Yes. You know, um, this butterfly, um, there is national flower, there is national, uh, you know, many national things. But in Nepal, uh -huh. the, the Papilio Krishna, Okay, the Papilio Krishna, mm -hmm. this butterfly is proposed. It is not yet decided. Uh -huh. Okay, yet they have published this stamp, the posted uh -huh. stamp uh, for Papilio Krishna. So uh, uh -huh. actually in Nepal, there is Colin Phillips from UK. He is known as uh -huh. Putali Bazi. Putali, uh, Putali is the name of a butterfly. Butterfly in Nepali, Putali. Okay? Putali. Yes, Putali. And Bazi means grandfather. Ah. So, oh, okay. a butterfly uh, researcher, Mr. Colin Phillips uh, from um, UK. Um, hmm. From Okay, we have a friend from Chile joined just now. She's from Chile. Ah the country South oh. America. <laughs> so that's uh, Gilda. <laughs> Welcome back, Gilda. Nice to have you. Maybe she's connected. So um, this Colin Phillips, he is known as Putali Baze or meaning Putali means butterfly, Baze's grandfather. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, I have another one come from Netherlands. He's from Nepal. Ah, okay. Oh my God! So yeah. we, have the the, um, we have the world yeah. today. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, thank you, Randy. Also, tell us a little bit about uh, Colorado. Is it like Nepal, the boulder uh, and the grizzly, Colorado? Uh, yeah, it's uh, actually very similar. Uh, they have the Rocky Mountains that are about half as high as the Himalayas. Yes. <laughs> um, but uh, very, also very beautiful country. And then uh, on the Eastern part is a lot of farmland, mm -hmm. um, but uh, they have a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of wildlife, uh, mountain goats, bears, elk, deer, uh, uh, lots of birds, uh, many different kinds of birds in the prairie. Uh, the flatlands has uh, some interesting uh, animals as well, animals and birds, so. 
uh, yeah, it's very, it's in many ways, it's similar to Nepal with the mountains and stuff. And uh, also goes from the mountains to the very flat land. So you've got the Tarai and the Himalayas <laughs> together, but. Okay. So uh, maybe next time, Randy, other than uh, all the social work and good deeds you have done for Nepal, we want to thank you again. But next time, please introduce uh, your Colorado, your hometown to us. So uh, students in Japan, Netherlands, Chile also get to know a little bit about your hometown. Is that okay? Oh, uh, yeah, that would be fine. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, next is Pashupati Ji. Which animal was most interesting for you? We, can you say the number? Yeah, it's uh, 270. 270. Okay, so today we are looking at, it's a little like a little game today. So number 270. Do you remember the name? Yeah, octopus. Oh, the coconut, coconut. octopus. And I think it seems like a, uh, some light on their things. Yes, this is called bioluminance. Bioluminance. Yes, luminance so means light. It, it will glow uh, yes. on. Yes, it is like Zunkiri, you know, Zunkiri. the firefly. You know, yeah. in Nepal, we don't see the animals in the ocean, but animals in the ocean can also produce light from the body, from their body, to communicate with their mates, right? Oh. Yes, so I think this is biolumicis, I think, but we can do more research about the coconut octopus. Coconut octopus. Please remember coconut octopus, so you can do Google search, find the scientific name, and then do research about it, okay? Thank yeah. you, Pashupati ji. Next is Masa Aki Ito-san. Which, which animal uh, most uh, interesting for you? Uh, uh, I, uh, blue, blue Momon Butterfly. Oh, okay. Thank you. Um, I, uh, this one is Maharashtra State Butterfly. In India. Uh, yeah, Maharashtra uh, is a state in India and that is the butterfly, uh, their state butterfly. It was announced so that people become more aware of their natural habitat. I, I only remember the name. Yes, that's great. So let's do more research because if we don't know the name, we don't know what to look for. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Kishore, sir, anything? You, Kishore sir? Kishore sir? Are you yes, I'm sorry, like there was some, yes, I'm back. Yes. Hello. Please. Yeah, you can hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh, for me, uh, there was this bird, 269. 269. Yeah, mountain bluebird. Okay, it's a beautiful yeah, bird. I, I was wondering why it is called mountain bluebird especially why it is called mountain bluebird. Where do you find this bird? Yes. I um, don't think we can find this bird in Nepal, but it's called mountain bluebird. Yes, we are full of questions. The answer is not with me, but we can do our short research and come back next Zoom and we can discuss it. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, next was uh, Daiki. Mm -hmm. Which one is your animal? Um, let me say it's a difficult question. I'm into good uh, in everything. <laughs> You're like me. You're interested um, in everything. <laughs> so, uh, um, I didn't remember the number, but uh, the name um, E.T. Crab. Yeah. That crab was hairy crab. Uh, really yeah, it has this one. I know. Yes. That. I mean, it's this is. weird. It looks like alien. Um, uh, they live in deep sea. That's correct. 
and um, they um, uh, they uh, they always dwell they always dwell um, in chimneys. 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 Seaweed. Seaweed. Is that right? Seaweed. 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 Yeah, they hide um, in the seaweed. No, because there's no and, seaweed in deep ocean. And they domesticate um, some kind of bacteria mm. in, on their fur. On the fur, okay. Uh, maybe their hair. We know what to call it. <laughs> Hairy crabs. Okay, thank you, Daiki. Let's do more research on your animal. Um, okay. Next is Yui, please. Okay. Um, I'm interested in uh, number is uh, 290. 290. Uh, royal flycatcher. Oh my God! Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they have a flower crown. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, in Japan, uh, they're uh, a little similar, but really, what is Kikugashira. it? Yes, Kikugashira. Kikugashira. We call we call it. Okay, Kikugashira. Okay. Yes. I will try to find out uh, the name. I will. Um, you can text it in the text mm. message. Um, okay, I'm like the people who came at the end is Gilda and Arbin sir also came at the end, but I think he left already. Uh, Gilda, can you hear me, Gilda? Would you like to introduce yourself? We have several new members today. Yes, I, I hear you very, very well, but um, I, I recently uh, can enter because here we changed the uh, the the hour, the hour is different now, and I entered recently. I cannot see all the program. Sorry. Oh, that's all right, Gilda. Gilda, tell Thank us you. where you are from. I, I come from Chile, uh, near Santiago, near the capital. Mm. I how live here. The, I, how is the COVID situation there? Because in Japan, they are getting new virus the virus from UK and virus from our South Africa. And we are a little bit scared because in Japan, we don't have the vaccine yet. How is the vaccine situation in Santiago, Chile? Uh, here, many people are, uh, are receive uh, the, the vaccine, but I don't like to put the vaccine because is a, a is an experimental vaccine, oh. and it's, it's, I don't know is very good or not. But people don't feel uh, good with that. Mm -hmm. uh, when put the vaccine, many people uh, stay very bad uh, one or two days, mm -hmm. and I I don't know what happened with that really. Yes, yeah, side effect, right? Uh... Okay. What happened there? What happened there with the problem? Here in Japan? Yes. Yes. In Japan, uh, only the doctors, uh, the medical line people have received vaccine. For normal civilians like us, uh, we must wait in the mail because the ward office will send us a letter especially foreigners, Randy, am I correct? Yeah, I heard that was 12th of April, but uh, I've nothing definite, yeah. Yes, Some yes. after April 12th. Yeah, after we get the paper from the ward office, we have to take appointment and mm -hmm. take a vaccine. That's what I heard. Yeah. Is it same in Hiroshima? Um, maybe. Maybe, is it same in Kagawa? I don't know. You... Well, I, I don't receive any letter about vaccine. Mm, okay. Pashupatiji, have you taken vaccine in, in Kathmandu? Not yet, not yet. Not yet. So we are waiting to have a vaccine. 
Okay. Oh, first dose vaccine, then after maybe second dose. Mm. Okay, uh, it is now 9.40 and it is uh, time for us to say goodbye, good night. Um, Gilda, I'm sorry, but uh, you missed a little bit talk uh, with Randy. Would you like to ask uh, something to Randy? Hello, I, yeah, if you have a question, please, yeah. No, okay, maybe Milda, maybe Gilda don't know. Uh, Randy is now living in Hyogo, Kobe, and he mm -hmm. is teacher uh, at teaching English at uh, Kan, uh, Kobe. Kansai, uh, yeah, actually retired there, but uh, uh, yeah, I'm still teaching English. Uh -huh. Yes, he is teaching English at Kansai Gaku in Daigaku. Is Daigaku means university. And he's also teaching oh, another university, I, Konan University, I think. Uh, yeah, that's right. Yes. So Gilda, today we have an uh, English teacher, um, but he is also founder of uh, Family and Friends NGO and helping children in Nepal get education as well as training teachers. I think this is more important because quality of education is very important. Even though many Japanese people have come to Nepal, build the school building, the actual teaching education is not good high quality. Yes, please. Possibly. And uh, also I would like to add something Mm -hmm. uh, in my profession, I'm working in software company. Uh, basically, we do uh, development for school management ERP. So, um, Randy, uh, mm -hmm. if you would like to work with us, we can provide a software for uh, schools as well, so that you can monitor uh, every activities from anywhere, because that is for like... Uh, on the cloud-based system. So we, through ERP, cloud-based ERP, we can monitor every school's activities so that we can bring some environment to create a very good educational system in the schools so that it will uh, create a good environment for education, I think. Okay. Um, yeah, please uh, friend me on Facebook and, um, uh, send me some information and I can relay that information to the schools and organizations we work with. So uh, they might be interested in, because it's all their their decision. I can't, uh, but uh, no, it's a good good reference. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah we, we are doing uh, some CSRE stops. So uh, after looking that uh, school's uh, environment, we can do CSR as well, no problem. Uh, okay, good. Yeah, thank you. Welcome. All right. It is now time to say good night and goodbye until we meet next week, Saturday, 8.30 Japanese time, 5.15 Nepalese time. I want, I don't know what time it will be there, Gilda. Can you tell us? Uh, yes. Uh, here uh, we have one hour. Different, uh, one hour. Uh, more mm -hmm. and uh, you start there at uh, seven and here is at eight oh. uh, it's one hour different because I enter one hour <laughs> with a difference now that's okay today. Yeah. thank uh, you thank you very much next week and dhanyabad namaste and oyasumi nasai uh, mm -hmm. meaning good night. Bye-bye. <laughs> um, Thank you for joining. Thank you, Randy. Uh, Thank, you. Thank you, Gilda, Yui, Daiki, Masaaki. Talk to you in English again, Masaaki, and uh, Pashupatiji. Everybody, good night. And good night. Thank you. Nice talking, nice talking with you. Nice talking to you, too. Nice talking to everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Thank you.